then, then came the news that one of them had cancer. They're here tonight to help launch next week's European Cancer Week, and I'll be giving you an address later if you want more information about that. But now, it's a special pleasure to welcome Mel and Kim. Yeah, yeah. And you look good. Oh, thank good. you, Terry. So how are you feeling? Feeling good. Yeah, feel fine. Yeah, feeling you're on the mend and getting better all the yeah, time. Yeah, getting much better. I mean, at the moment, I'm still working on my walking because I walk with sticks. Yeah. So, but um, by summer, I should be getting it to Boogieing around. around. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, you, you had, um, Kim, you had lots of success, of course, very quickly. It was kind of overnight success, but yeah. it wasn't always like that. It wasn't that simple, was it? No, no. I mean, um, before that, we... We were in and out of jobs. We've done loads of things, haven't we? Oh. What did you do? Uh, worked in fine fair, in the factory, done reception. Uh, oh, God, loads of everything. Everything. Yeah, were you any good at the other job? No, <laughs> it was useless, especially <laughs> Mel. I'm not having any time, shall So, obviously, the only thing you could do is pop music. That's it. I mean, that's all we're good at. I mean, because, I mean, when we used to work in the factory, yeah. I mean, we used to, like, keep the governors up. You wear a miniskirt, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'll pay her a lot of money, you know. <laughs> and then you did a bit of modelling, page three modelling and all the rest that's of it. That's it. That's and you it. as well. Yeah. Well, oh, I didn't tell. I didn't, like, well, I don't know. Look. Now, Mel did a great thing the other day. Someone said that uh, she didn't have it all up there. She said, well, that's why I'm in the pop music which yeah. I thought was brilliant. <laughs> so can, can you uh, tell us about the day, you, you're such a, a cheerful and an off person, about the day that you were told you had cancer? Yeah, well, obviously, I mean, I was pretty devastated that they told me I had cancer, but it was something I thought it was not worth me sort of going into myself and saying like, you know, this is it, I'm going to die now, you know, when you've got cancer, you're, you know, you die. Oh, I mean, that's not how it is. I mean, basically, you just be, you've got to be positive, and I was very depressed, but I don't know, I mean, the family brought me out of it's it. It's funny. And um, myself as well, thinking positive yeah. helped. Um, what about the family? What did the family do to help you? What? Well, the family, they give you love, they support you, they talk to you. It's very important to talk. It's yeah. very important to talk, because otherwise, if you don't, you lock yourself away. You keep all your emotions inside of you, yeah. which is just no good. But it's it's hard hard to take. almost as tough for you. Because you're so close. Well, when yeah. Mum had phoned me and told me that Mel had cancer, because Mel was going through a lot of tests, and she phoned me up and she said, Mel's got cancer. I didn't want to believe it. So the first couple of weeks, I'd only go and see Mel once in a while because I thought if I didn't see her and I didn't think about it and she didn't remind me of it, it would go away. But um, I, it doesn't go away. It's very much there. How about the shock of it, the, the shock of it first, and then overcoming that? Did it take, take you a long time? It did. It took me a long time. I mean, at the beginning, till I was pretty angry with myself. I don't know why, but I was <laughs> Did you find that, that when, it, when it was known that you had cancer, that people treated you differently? Yeah, they did. Um, they were, I don't know, they were pretty distant. And I couldn't understand yeah. why they were distant. Do you think distant. there's people, there is that terrible thing about cancer, it's like the, the terrible. evil eye, people are afraid to touch you because yeah. they're going to catch it. Yeah, I mean, silly things like that, really. I mean, I don't know about that, if they think they're going to catch it, but... I think cancer is a lonely so Yeah, it is very, very, it's lonely. very lonely. Disease. Well, it can be a lonely disease because people associate cancer with death. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I think um, it's a lot to do with mental. I mean, obviously, you need medication. Mm. Yeah. But mental support, love from the family, yeah. positive thinking, and not giving up. Not giving yeah. up, because it doesn't mean death anymore. I mean, there is hope for a lot of people. Melanie is a prime example. Yeah. And, of course, the treatment, the treatment, of course, is, is very tough to take. And I mean, you, 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 you're wonderfully buoyant about it all, but the, the, the treatment is tough to take. You put on weight and all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, why I put on weight tail is because I was on steroids, yeah. which build you up, because they, they, they prepare the body for a shock, yeah. which is the chemotherapy. Because it's such strong stuff, it just really knocks you down. Yeah. You know, it knocks all the cells down. So, like, you, you yeah, haven't got the to... And you couldn't move your neck either for a long time? No, because I had um, an operation on my neck because I had tumours around the spine as well, which had to be removed. But meanwhile, I had to lay flat for quite a while, for quite a long time. Because if you'd moved, the tumour would have... Well, what it spine. is, the tumour was um, on my spine, which was 
I think so, was making my spine very weak, oh, so I couldn't nervous. stand. Yeah. That's it, it was on my nerve. Yeah. So my walking was going a bit funny. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're both writing songs for the first time, are you? Yeah. 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 We've got you a little portable studio in the, yeah. <coughs> in the flat. Have you ever give us a burst of your own song? Um, which one should we sing? I've got so many. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I remember one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, the other one. No. Yeah. Hey, go on, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the first one you talk about. Okay, which one is that one? Oh yes, I'm leaving. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh. One, two, three, go. Oh yes, I'm leaving now. I had enough I'm tired of you going strutting all yourself <laughs> and I know that you've been seeing her next door don't tell me baby cause I heard it all before cause baby <laughs> I can see through your mind <laughs> you tell me you love me <laughs> so don't I was going to ask you if it's going to be difficult to perform again, but quite obviously it isn't. No, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's just going to be the problem. So I'll get hot sweats. <laughs> <laughs> like now. Yeah. Have you got any advice? For others, I mean, you're a shining example of how people should approach yeah. cancer, but but not many people could approach it in the same way as you do, with an enormous buoyancy and optimism. Have you any advice for people in the same? Well, what's the important tell is obviously family support. Family yeah. support. I mean, in the end, it's up to you to think positive, mm. and a lot of love. A lot of love is very important for some and reason. And also, I think talking about it. As well. Yeah, yeah. You mustn't. I mean, because most people I know, they must have cancer and they lock themselves away. They think, God, I've got no hair, I mustn't come out like this. But people think I'm abnormal or things like that. And yeah, it's no. just not the way. Yes, yes right. And also, too, there's a, a backup yeah. back thing, which is very good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to get on good. to that. So okay. don't go away for a moment, but a round of applause for our marvellous man. I'd like, to, I'd like to invite to join us one of our, our leading cancer specialists. He's also the chairman of Backup, which Kim is talking about, the Information and Counselling Service for Cancer Patients. Please welcome Dr. Morris.